Great Scott. Great Scott. Great Scott. Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Great Scott. I'm Scotty V. Good to see you. So, I don't normally do straight-up comic book or movie reviews specifically on a week-by-week basis, and I did talk about this on this week's episode of Radio KAL. We do a radio show for the Superman homepage every month, the last Wednesday of every month, where Steve Eunice and I talk about all of the Superman happenings for the month. If you're not tuning in, check it out at supermanhomepage.com every last Wednesday of every month. You're in for a great show. I talk about this because, for me, this, if you're not reading Superman comics and you've been disheartened by the New 52 or you don't think you like the direction that the New 52 took Superman in or you don't like the fact that his parents are gone or you don't like the fact that he's not with Lois or you don't like the fact that he's currently powered down and he's wearing jeans and a t-shirt and you've heard all of these things and you're coming out there saying, this is not Superman, this is Bull. I want to say this. I've been reading since the launch of the New 52, and of course before that, because I work on the Superman homepage, and I have to talk about things, and I have to read all the books, and I have to know what's going on, and I haven't really been into it myself. Not because of a lot of the reasons the fans give, that this isn't Superman. I mean, it's been Superman, and for the most part, his attitude is still Superman. There are some things that are a little off, and they're trying to make him a little more cool, or a little more aloof, or whatever it is that they think people want to read about in their superheroes these days. So some of that stuff's off-putting. But I've also found most of the writing and storytelling just not to be that good. And then you got Romita Jr. on the Superman book right now, and the art's not very good. But here's the thing. This story, the truth story, the story where Lois Lane reveals to the world that Clark Kent is Superman, the thing that had a lot of fans up in arms and probably still does, I'm still holding out for what I've been promised in the story, and that is Lois saying to Clark that they had their reasons, Diana was in on it, they knew it had to happen, and it was something they had to do, and we're going to find out why. Now, I don't know how they're going to get out of it when they reset all this, or how they're going to say that the world no longer knows, or if they're just going to keep Clark and Superman one and the same for everyone for the foreseeable future, and that's a problem in and of itself for a lot of people. But here's the thing. This story, the truth arc, I find it very dramatic, very cool. It's a shake-up, yes, to Clark, to Superman, but here is why it doesn't bother me. You know, anytime you read comic books, you want to have the drama. You need to have a change in the lives of the characters. Otherwise, it's just ho-hum, boring, villain of the week. Let me put him down in the streets of Metropolis, and then we'll start again next month. And that's never been the most interesting thing to me. The most interesting thing to me is Superman, Clark's humanity, the way that he fits in with the people, the way that he loves the Earth and humanity so much, the way he endlessly make sure that people don't get hurt and that people are protected. That's his core. He does it no matter what. And now he has very little powers. He's hugely scaled down. He can't fly. He's still somewhat impervious to pain and damage. But when he gets shot or something, he gets incredibly bruised and it hurts now. I'm expecting him to go back to normal soon. But this particular episode, Pack, Greg Pack, Aaron Cooter, The art is beautiful. The writing, exceptional. This is Superman. If you haven't read this, Action Comics number 42, this comic you need to read. I would recommend you go back and start at the Truth Arc, although they're all out of order and disjointed anyway. So the fact that you didn't start at the beginning won't really hurt this story. But part one of this particular story takes place in Action number 41. So you might want to very least... Look at that one. What I find in this story is something that I haven't found in months of the New 52. Great writing, heroic heart, spirit, inspiration. This is Superman. He's depowered. Lots of people are against him. It seems the American politics is against him. It seems the police on the street are against him. But the everyman is still for him because they know that he's a champion of the oppressed. They're having a party on the street. They're saying, we love Clark. We love Superman. We're going to stand with him no matter what happens and the police come down on him. And I'm not going to tell you everything that happens, but the fact that Superman stands with them, you think no one's going to show up, and there he is, just in time. It's it's fabulous. I had tears in my eyes. I was excited. This is Superman. Greg Pak gets it. The art is beautiful. It's wonderful to read. 
it gave me the feelings I get when I watch a great television show where there's a lot of character and there's a lot of heart and there's a lot of spirit and there's a lot of inspiration. This is the book, if you've been disheartened by the New 52, that will get you heartened again for Superman. Read it. Check it out. You've got to. You'll thank me for it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And remember, always look up in the sky. Thanks for watching another episode. I